Ladies and gentlemen, we will eliminate import duties on sanitary pads to improve health conditions, particularly for girls. It's very important, but what we have to really do is to make sure we produce the sanitary pads in Ghana. That was Vice President Dr. Mohamed Baumian on 22nd August 2020, making a firm promise that his party will eliminate import tariffs on sanitary pads if re-elected into power. The new patriotic party won the 2020 election, but the government is yet to fulfill its promise. Sanitary pads are subjected to a 20% import tax and a 12.5% value added tax, making the product expensive for many women. Taxes aren't the only factor driving up the prices of sanitary pads. According to dealers, the high cost of fuel is also to blame. <laughs> When it's that time of the month, Hega, a resident of Choco, gets anxious because of menstrual cramps. But the rising price of sanitary pads is also giving her heart palpitations. If we are entering new Manta, I become worried because the sanitary pad first, we used to buy it five cities. But now, some are selling it 80 cities and some are selling it 10 cities. She is sometimes forced to use unhygienic materials, which can have serious reproductive health consequences. The money that I was holding at that time is 5 cities. And it's come by the sanitary price, so I need to buy zero. The rising cost of sanitary parts has forced many women to use baby diapers. Diapers are preferred over sanitary pads because they absorb more fluid and require fewer changes. Again, they are cheaper. Ayele explains how the baby diaper is used as a sanitary pad. She's not the only one who menstruates in diapers. According to Jamila Mohammed, many women in Choco do the same. She does, however, add that when she does not have enough money for diapers, she uses toilet paper. She gives a breakdown of why the rising cost of sanitary pads is economically squeezing many residents of Choco. Activists have been calling on government to keep its promise of eliminating sanitary parts taxes. Social media has been flooded with posts explaining why the government should not tax women's periods. SNAM is one of the activists campaigning for the government to keep its promise of eliminating part taxes. She tells stories about young girls who can't afford sanitary pads and have to resort to sex to pay for them. We have seen in the news, we have heard stories, and they are real. It's not like someone is making them up where girls are exchanging sexual um, um, activities just to be able to purchase sanitary, towel, sanitary pads. The prices are, it, it's just outrageous, you know, and it keeps increasing every day. It's becoming expensive to menstruate. She makes a case for why the situation should be tackled with emergency. 
in December, we bought a box of soft care pad, a box with 24 pieces at 95 CDs. You may want to do the division. Just last week, this same box was costing 165 CDs on the market. So you want to divide that by 24 and see the difference over the period. It's, it's just outrageous, over 50% hike or increment. Hega, Jamila, and Ayeli are pleading with government to pay attention to their cries. His Excellency Nana Ado Dankwa Ekufu, we beg of him, he should reduce the prices of things. System this is a reminder to the government to listen to the cries of women and act swiftly. If we are a Bafos report, join news. Hungry man say, fix the country. Melefu say, fix yourself. Really disturbing uh, uh, facts emerging from that particular story. But this is our John News Tracker story. And uh, it, it follows from government's promise to scrap taxes of uh, feminine hygiene products or uh, menstrual, menstruation uh, pads. This is not uh, a, 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 a promise or if it had been implemented, let me put it that way, it wouldn't be exclusive to Ghana. There are so many countries that have scrapped taxes on menstrual products. And since about 2004, you have the likes of um, Australia, Germany, Canada, India, and in Africa, Kenya and Rwanda do not uh, impose taxes on uh, menstrual hygiene products. And so the question is, why can't we do this in Ghana? Well, I've been joined by Awal Ahmed Kariyama. He's Executive Director, Rural Initiatives for Self-Empowerment Ghana. It's RISE. And uh, he's been working in this uh, particular area for some time. And so he'll be sharing his experience with us. Thank you for your time this morning, sir. We just heard from one of the ladies in that story say that there were girls who were exchanging sex so that they could get money to buy sanitary parts. What's your experience? What are some of the stories you've heard? Hello? Um, uh, Mr. Kariyama, you have to unmute your device so we hear what you're saying. <coughs> Thank, thank you very much for the opportunity to speak on this important subject matter. And uh, I want to say good morning to your viewers and uh, those of, of us who are, those who are listening to you online. Uh, it's unfortunate that uh, transactional sex is a common occurrence in some parts of Ghana. And it's unfortunate that, uh, like your interviewee in indicated, that some people have to exchange sex in order to afford sanitary pass. And that is why we are calling the tax an illegal and an immoral tax. Because uh, when you talk about misery, it's a natural occurrence. Hello? That women and girls, no circumstance should anybody, under no circumstance should any woman be forced to undergo a uh, period poverty or menstrual poverty as a result of the fact that there are high taxes on sanitary parts. So it's unacceptable and it's a common practice in some of the places. Mm. So apart from transactional sex, uh, what do some of the girls do in order to um, you know, help themselves during the time of the month? Yes, so uh, girls unfortunately do a lot of things to be able to manage their menses. Hello? Uh, we seem to be having a challenge uh, with Mr. Kariyama's line there. He's joining us via Zoom, and he's been working uh, in a lot of rural areas when it comes to the issue of young girls and uh, period poverty. Uh, Mr. Kariyama, if you can hear me, you were answering the question about uh, what young girls have to do apart from 
uh, transactional sex uh, in order to just uh, help themselves during the time of the month? Yes, so uh, apart from the fact that, uh, oh, who is this? Hello? Hello, hello, madam. Yes, please, we can hear you. Yes, so I'm saying that apart from the transactional sex issue that we have raised, girls also undertake some good measures. Some of them use sanitary pads that are not healthy. That ideally, we know that there are reusable sanitary pads, but there are some that are actually not reusable because mm. of the safety mm. and the fact that they are not hygienic. But because of the high cost of sanitary pads and the lack of access to it, so in essence, period poverty, people are resorting to crude means. They are using rags and others that can lead to infections to be able to manage their menses, which is uh, seriously unfortunate. Aside that, we have found instances where some girls just drop out of school. They are not able to go to school or engage in any productive work just because they are menstruating and they do not have their arts and other things to be able to keep them, stop the flow from coming and for them to go about their daily businesses. So if you look at the data that is available, majority of girls, we are talking about the fact that the school is one of the safest places for our girls when they are adolescents, when they are growing. But when they are menstruating, they are not able to go to school because the school is not safe. And so by not going to school, it exposes them to further forms of risk and as they are not in school because the school is safer for them. So they, they, they do other things. They get out of the, the school. They stay at home just to manage their messes. They cannot do any work because they don't have access to sanitary parks. So access is a big problem. So for government to tax it again, it's, it's, it's uncalled for, it's unacceptable. Mm. In that story we played before we started the conversation, we heard uh, the Vice President, Dr. Mahmoud Baumia, speak uh, about the scrapping taxes on uh, female hygiene products, uh, such as pads. We haven't seen that promise fulfilled. And uh, as someone who works in the sector, unfortunately, we have not been able to get a response from the gender ministry. Uh, but in your engagement with uh, you know, persons responsible for, for ensuring that this promise is fulfilled, have you received any communication as to why we've, we still haven't seen the taxes scrapped? So I think the we have engaged a lot of duty bearers around this and the advocacy is happening at different different levels unfortunately the problem has to do with the lack of political will and even i think that we don't under we don't really understand we don't really understand the dynamics of these things and what it actually means we unfortunately have to see menstruation in a different perspective over the years when we talk about menstruation we are mostly engaging about the fact that it's about women, but it's not only about women, okay? So we need to understand that men are also directly affected. And in fact, for us, for me, when I always, I always tell people that when I hear the word menstruation, what I hear is hope, because menstruation is a hope that there is going to continue procreation. Menstruation is a hope that we are going to have a very solid source of human resource going forward. So we need to see it in that perspective. But unfortunately, over the years, what we are lacking is a political will and an understanding, understanding of what the dynamics and the challenges these women are facing. Mm. Okay, so for, for, for us, I think that the political will has to happen and we need to continue to engage our political elite, especially the Ministry of Finance and Economic Planning and other policy holders. It's, 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 it's uh, encouraging to hear the Vice President say that we're going to scrap, but most of the things we do in Ghana and politicians say we don't have deadlines assigned to them. So we need to urge the vice president and the Ministry of Finance and all those who matter in policy circles to walk the talk and set up firm deadlines to ensure that indeed the taxes are scrapped. We are talking about about 32% of the tax on this because apart from the 20% tax, luxury tax, they also pay VAT on it, which is unacceptable. So the average person cannot afford the sanitary part, mm -hmm. which in essence is unfair. While we wait for government to fulfill this particular promise, there are organizations like yours that are stepping up, helping young girls, especially in rural Ghana, uh, you know, manage the time of the month. There are those who have 
created um, environmentally friendly sanitary towels which are reusable and there are those who are also providing sanitary towels uh, to young girls free of charge. Tell us what work you have been doing in, in this particular regard. So for us, what we have been doing is we basically working around the issue of the advocacy component where we are mobilizing men and boys. You see, beyond access to sanitary parts, there is something we call period poverty and period shaming. And we have had instances where girls have contem contemplated committing suicide just because they were mocked before because they are menstruating. So we are working a lot with men and boys to let them better understand and support women who are menstruating to stop period shaming. So we have trained a lot of adolescent boys and girls and men and boys as well as parents in the rural communities so that they are better able to explain to other community members to understand girls who are menstruating. Some of the schools, they mock the girls. And the girls, we have had stories in other countries as well as in Ghana where girls have contemplated and some have actually committed suicide because they were menstruating and they were made fun of. So we are doing a lot of advocacy to get men and boys to better understand and stop period shaming. We are also working with adolescent girls and groups to promote the use of reusable sanitary pads through training so that we are training a crop of them to be able to uh, make their own sanitary pads, reuse them, and how to manage and treat them without causing infections. And then at the policy level, we continue the advocacy for the scrapping of this tax, the nuisance tax on sanitary pads, so that more people can have access to them. We've also had arrangements in some of the communities where we have a project we call Paths for Grades, where we want to ensure that girls who are doing well in school we use access to uh, contraceptives as well as sanitary pads and others as a motivation to keep more girls in school. So on the World Menstrual Hygiene Day, through our program, we shared a lot of uh, sanitary pads to girls. We also created a lot of awareness to break the barrier in terms of the period shape. We also have a, a group of volunteers called Digital Literacy Agents that we are being funded by Garmin and the, Garmin and the US Department of State where they are providing access and information to women about their bodies and sexuality, as well as campaigning against uh, issues of menstrual poverty at the community level. So those are the actions that we are taking at our level beyond policy advocacy and community mobilization to address the issue. Mm. Uh, finally, Mr. Karyama, uh, when this government took over, um, there were promises made to scrap some taxes, and we saw that happening. Uh, a long list of them, about 12 uh, taxes were scrapped. This promise ha has been in the waiting. We are yet to see it fulfilled. But based on how fast government acted when it had to scrap taxes, and with this particular one, the delay we are seeing, are you convinced that government is really committed to scrapping the taxes on uh, feminine hygiene products? Well, so far, based on the data and the delays, and if you compare the alacrity and the speed with which other taxes has been scrapped, then we will say that, like I emphasized earlier, we don't see a lot of political will in this regard, and it's unfortunate that uh, it, things are dragging like this. And so this is a wake-up call for all the women's rights organizations, all the reproductive health uh, advocates in the country and beyond. And that's why I'm excited that the Joy News and Multimedia is giving the space for us to be able to discuss this. I think that we need to go to be able to engage our politicians to push them in terms of providing us clear timelines in terms of how they will rule out some of these policy proposals that they have. Indeed, it's far, it's long overdue and the girls cannot wait. Many more girls are getting infected. Many girls are suffering period poverty. Many girls are being shamed because they cannot access this. And so it's unfortunate that we are, it is dragging like this. We cannot afford to continue to have 32.5% taxes on sanitary parts. It's unacceptable. It's not done in any way in the world. And so we need to, government has, must make good this application and immediately. Thank you so much, Awal Ahmed Karyama, is Executive Director for RISE Ghana. We've been talking about uh, government's promise to scrap taxes 
uh, of uh, feminine hygiene products and uh, the fact that we've not seen it and the impact this is happen, uh, having on many women in the country, also considering uh, the high cost in goods and services.